Hello fellow collectors and welcome to another weekly haul video. Uh, this week I have, yeah, I have a lot. <laughs> I have a lot. Uh, I have 45 cars in total uh, that I picked up throughout the week. I, I actually started the week thinking, okay, this week I'm going to be good. I'm not going to go crazy. And yeah, then, you know, new Mini GT came out, new Sparky showed up and I uh, picked up a bunch of Hot Wheels in store, and yeah, I got a lot. So uh, what I'm gonna do this week is I'm gonna show you uh, what I've picked up in the first part of this video, then we'll open some, some pieces in the second part, and then I suspect I'm gonna have to probably do a, another two-part haul video to look at uh, some of the other more premium cars in more detail. So I've got stuff ranging from mainline Hot Wheels and Matchbox up through super premium resin models. So uh, lots to look at. So let's get started. Uh, first off in stores, uh, I managed to pick up the, the full flying custom set. Um, these have been around for a while. I'm sure you've probably all already seen these. So we'll just look at these really quickly. You have the 55 Chevy, it's an eight car set. And um, you know, this is in the US, this is a Target exclusive set they put out I think a couple mixes per year of these cars and in, in a kind of retro uh, retro livery and with you know old style wheels and um, generally they're pretty cool um, and I've tended to pick most of them up um, every once in a while they will include a fantasy casting in the set so I sometimes skip those but this time I went ahead and grabbed all of them so the 55 Chevy uh, next one is the 64 Chevy Nova Wagon. I think this one is probably my favorite out of this set. Um, and, you know, the cars are the same in all of these. Then the 68 Shelby GT500, a racing livery. Nice retro racing livery. Then the 70 Plymouth Barracuda. A nice green color. 70 Ford Mustang Mach 1. This is not really one of my favorite castings. I almost didn't pick this up, but figured maybe it'll grow on me if I have one. Then the 84 Pontiac Firebird. A nice black and gold. This one looks really nice. And the Custom Auto. And the custom auto, you know, it, it looks like a real car, but this is a Hot Wheels. I guess you would call it a Hot Wheels original. It's it's a little bit insulting to call it a pure fantasy casting, like some of the wacky castings that Hot, Wheel do, Hot Wheels do. Um, but it is, a, um, you know, this is named after the designer of the car. And it's it's actually, a, it's a pretty cool model for, a, you know, for a Hot Wheels original. There are a few of these that I really like. And then the last one in this set is the 71 Plymouth GTX. Then next up from Hot Wheels, I also found a complete set of uh, the latest Boulevard mix. Um, in the US, Boulevard is a Walmart exclusive. And you know, these are Hot Wheels premium models, five car sets. I'm, if you're outside the US, you may not have these, I don't know. Um, but this is, these, these sets are just kind of, to me, seem like a random mix of cars, uh, that they throw together and they don't have, seem to have really have a truly coherent theme, even though it's supposedly cruising along the boulevard or whatever. But I mean, well, I guess maybe that's what it is, but you get like race cars and I don't know, it's, it's a little bit of a weird series, but anyway, this, this set has class, uh, Volkswagen classic bug. It's the first car. It's the back of the car and the other cars in the set and the 66 Pontiac GTO this is a super lowered version of this car they put this out a couple times now um, I think it was in another Boulevard set too or maybe it was a Fast and Furious set I was I was just trying to look at my wall displays to see um, it was in a in a red color but this one looks nice then you have a 70 Plymouth Superbird, a nice yellow color. This one looks looks pretty good. Then the 
DMC DeLorean in the stock DeLorean style, not the Back to the Future style, which is the more common version that Hot Wheels seems to want to put out. So it's cool to have a stock DeLorean. I, I don't have this. I think they put this out before, um, but I don't. I didn't have one, so I'm very happy to have this. And then this last one is a new casting, and I think this one looks really cool. Custom '70 Chevy Nova, some fancy bodywork and a wing, and it's kind of kind of separated from the typical Nova looks, but I don't know. It looks really cool. We'll see once I get it out of the package. That's the the real interesting thing. All right. So otherwise, local finds. Um, I picked up this rabbit at Hobby Lobby. This is another case of it's like, yeah, yeah that's kind of cool. You know, do I want it? Nah, I don't know. Maybe I, I don't need it. You know, I don't. Why do I want another rabbit? Um, but it's nice blue color. For some reason, I like this casting. And I was like, yeah, what's one more car? So I grabbed it. <laughs> um, and then I picked up this uh, Volkswagen Airport Police. Kind of an international police looking car uh, at least it has kind of a german style uh, police livery even if it may not be a german airport police car i don't know um, i don't really collect bugs per se but i do collect international police cars or police cars overall so i don't have that one um, i picked up this plymouth 68 plymouth gtx custom just because it looks sweet <laughs> I love this Barrett Jackson series. Um, this one sold for three hundred thousand dollars, which is kind of crazy, but it looks looks really cool. And then I picked up this uh, nineteen sixty eight Plymouth Satellite in green, um, just because I'm developing an affinity for these for these cars, green light wagons. And uh, seemed like a cool version. And then something completely different. I picked up a couple tanks. <laughs> I don't know why. I haven't collected military vehicles really, um, but this this uh, Panther tank seemed pretty cool. And then they had a a Sherman as well, so I picked that up too. Uh, I don't know if this. Uh, this means uh, I'm going to be collecting military vehicles, but I do plan on buying a case of the Greenlight series that's coming out, the Battalion 64 series, um, just to check them out. I, I think I probably will, will end up picking up a case for those and uh, we'll see, see what those look like. But those are cool. And then I picked up one Matchbox 5-pack, the Wagons 5-pack. I had never picked this up. Um, decided I would like to have this Audi and this Cadillac, so went ahead and grabbed this. Nothing too exciting. All right, uh, then online, um, I picked up this 2020 Ford Police Interceptor Utility. This is a fire chief livery. I collect this casting. This one looks really cool. So it's a Detroit Fire Department. Um, so this is, this is very nice. I'm running out of places to put things. <laughs> uh, and then the first of the new new, new Mini GT releases. Um, at least this is a new release in a Miho exclusives packaging. It was released internationally uh, a while back. I missed these. I did not get one. So I was I was happy to, to finally grab one in the Miho exclusive. These are limited to 2400. So there aren't a whole lot of these. If you're interested in them, make sure you grab them soon before they're gone. Um, and yeah, so very, very happy. This is Porsche Taycan. I'm uh, very happy to have this. And then I also picked it up in, in this blue, frozen blue metallic color. This one's limited to only 1800. So there's even fewer of these, but I picked up both of these. And these are, these are brand new releases for, for Miho exclusives, even though they were uh, released internationally. Um, and more brand new releases from Sparky this time. Uh, they put out this uh, AMG GT3 and this uh, very famous Wins livery. I mean, it was more famous when it was run on a Porsche 962, but uh, it's still, it's, it has, it's one of these iconic liveries, I guess. 
similar to a Golf or something, maybe not quite as iconic iconic as that, but uh, it's still very cool to have this on the on the, the GT3 car that, that has run it at Daytona. Things are gonna start falling in over. And then these I was really excited about. Um, these are Porsche 956s. Uh, they have quite a few of these that they're, they're bringing out now. And this is, they, they, they've brought three in so far and I picked up all three. So you have the first one in this Kenwood livery, which uh, finished third at the 24 hours of Le Mans in 1983. I, I, I'm an absolute nut for group C cars. Um, and uh, and uh, you know the 24 hours of Le Mans is just it's always been my favorite race. Group C era of cars has always been my favorite era of cars, and the Porsches were you know a huge part of that. Even if I you know my my true favorite car from that era is the Jaguar uh, XJR 9, 10, 12, whatever they ran. Um, that was great. This one's got a kind of squished blister, but that's okay because I'm going to open it. And another 956, the, uh, this is the Spirit of America livery, and this one finished third at the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1986. And uh, it's very cool. And then this one's really cool. I remember this car when it ran in the Boss livery. And uh, finished seventh of the 24 hours of Le Mans 1983. So it didn't, didn't finish particularly well, but it was such a striking livery that it is, it is very cool. And it's very, very, very nice to have this now as a, as a 164 scale model. All right, other stuff. So let's see, pick this thing up. Um, this is a Bugatti Chiron uh, from a, a Chinese brand that is a little bit of a mystery brand. It's sold under a few different names. It's usually referred to as a JKM or a Jackie Kim brand. And uh, they, you know, they have several colors of this. And I know, I know this has been shown a few times on other channels, but you know, it's just a nice, you know, it, it's, it seems like they're really trying to do a good job with this. The packaging is really cool. It's a nice form factor. The car is nestled in here and you know, they, they have you know a nice graphic on the front and then they do the, the graphics on the side of the boxes and what have you. So it seems like they're really doing a nice, a nice job on these, but I don't think these are licensed, um, which is a little bit unfortunate. So hopefully they, they can get to a point where they, if they're not licensed models, that they can start to license them because these look like they're pretty cool, um, pretty cool models. I don't know. We'll see when we get it out of the box. Um, let's see. What else do we have here? Lots of mini GTs. So first, some older releases that I picked up. Um, I picked up several of these uh, Skyline uh, GTRs. R32s, I believe these are R32s, right? Um, in this BP, BP livery, this uh, Kiyosaki livery, and then a stock stock version of these. Um, I just, I picked these up because I didn't have them. These have been around for a while, so these are not, not new. Um, but I like racing liveries, and I didn't have a stock color version of this yet, so, so I'm happy to have those. Um, let's see. All right. So I picked this thing up from Tarmac Works. This is a Zonda Revolution, Revolution Grigio Knockhill Special Edition. Um, and, in this is a, this is a global 64 release, which it appears to be mostly similar to the other Global 64 Zonda R that they put out, uh, but we need to get it out of the package and compare it to see see the difference. Um, I will say this because I always complain about the, the Tarmac Works Global 64 packaging. This packaging I like a lot better. 
I mean, if they issued their cars in something like this, of this size, that would be really nice with the window. It's actually very cool. But the pricing on these, this one costs like $15 or $17 or something. This one costs 40. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that, but let's see. I need to get that out of the package and take a look at it so we can compare it to the Zonda R. And let's see, before we get to their mini GTs, new mini GTs, then I picked up this, uh, this Ferrari 250 GTO. And this is another one of these Chinese no-name no -name brands. It's sold as JEC, but there is no name anywhere on this packaging. So I assume it is not licensed, um, which is unfortunate. But this thing is, this is a resin model, and this thing looks really, really incredible. Um, so we need to get this out of this, this packaging and, and really give it a up-close look. And it came with a little, little figure of uh, Enzo Ferrari. Uh, sitting on a chair, which is <laughs> kind of cool, <laughs> but um, yeah, this thing looks really sweet. So I don't know. We need to take a look at that. All right, and then we have new Mini GTs. I have almost all of the ones that they put out um, this week. Uh, first up, we have this Liberty Walk GTR. This is kind of an art car thing. So you definitely have to get this out of the package and look at it to really to really see it. Um, they put out two of these. I only have one. That was the only one that I um, one of the new releases that I wasn't able to get. Um, then they put out a new LB Works Toyota GR Supra. Uh, last week I had been wondering if there was a Liberty Walk version of the Supra. So apparently there is. Um, I believe this is actually the second release of this, but I didn't have an example, so I went ahead and grabbed this. Even though I'm not really a huge fan of these Supras, um, I'm you know I keep hoping that it'll change my mind. And the the other one that I picked up this time, this one I actually think looks really cool. Uh, this uh, this is an, this is another in the Pandem body kit, but this livery I think looks really nice. Um, so maybe that's going to be enough to to change my mind on these these super models. So, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. All right. Uh, let's see what else? We have the Toyota TRD 3000 GT in super white. Last week I picked up the one in red. Um, this is a new release in white. Um, I went ahead and grabbed it, but entirely sure why um, but figured may as well <laughs> and then the audi rs8 avant in black metallic with a roof box and that's really cool uh, so I'm, I'm very happy to have this i was waiting for one with the roof box on it because i do like that feature i had that i showed that off recently on the Lam lamborghini urus from mini gt so this is uh this is very similar so very cool and then we have the two four GTs, new four GTs. So these are these are brand new castings. These are the first releases of both of these. Um, you have the street version in liquid blue, and then you have the four GT GTLM test car, which is all in black. And when I first saw this one all in black, I was like, eh, yeah, I don't know if I really want that one because the racing liveries on these are are pretty iconic in their in their own right, and they are bringing them out with with those liveries on them. Um, but I bought the Bentley GT3 test car and that thing looks so sweet that I, I went ahead and grabbed this because I'm sure this one's going to look a lot better than I thought it would, you know, based on looking at pictures and what have you, because the Bentley certainly did. That was much, much nicer than, than I expected. So anyway, brand new castings for Mini GT, so very excited, exciting with these. There's gonna be a bunch of these coming out. They're putting out a four car set um, with all you know, with all four cars that ran at the 24 Hours of Le Mans uh, when Ford returned to Le Mans and won the race, uh, which is kind of interesting, but 
there's very little variation between the liveries on the cars. It's very, pretty much just the number and then the driver names are going to be the variations. So there's not, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a little bit t a tough purchase, you know, because you end up with four cars that are almost exactly the same. And then the last Mini GT is this, uh, the new Corvette Stingray, the C8 Corvette in this rapid blue. And I think that's actually everything I picked up. So uh, let's move on to taking a you know, closer look at, at some of these, some of these cars. I think, I suspect uh, most of these are going to be in in part two of this video but let's see because i wanted to do these these hot wheels first and uh let's take a look at those especially these boulevards so we'll go through these fairly quickly because i'm, I'm sure i'm far from the first person who has shown these cars off Classic bug, or what do they call this casting? Yeah, classic bug. Never been a huge fan of this casting, but this one looks pretty nice. I don't like the way this this rear piece sits. It looks like it should be a moving part, but it's not. It just kind of sits on there awkwardly. Um, kind of spoils it. But this one that actually looks really good. It's a nice uh, Volkswagen. Here at an angle, which was also in the card artwork. And they did, you know, Hot Wheels does a pretty good job when they want to. So, cool. Super low or GTO. It's kind of long and lean. No license plate. Yeah, no license plate. Tampa there looks a little messed up. Is that messed up? Oh yeah, totally messed up. Oh well. That's cool. So I, I mostly buy these because I'm collecting these series. I so I, I buy all of them even if they're not cars that I have a particular affinity for at the time that I buy them. And part of that is because I've you know as as I get more exposure to cars, different cars, cars that I originally didn't like, I often find that I do develop an affinity for them. And uh it makes it hard to pass pass things up, um, even if you know superficially it's not something that I really like, like this bug casting. Not something that I you know would, I don't truly collect this, and you know I typically don't like it that much. But I actually think this one's really cool. This is growing on me. So this is a nice version of this car. I always question whether this is really, you know, the right proportions for this car. I mean, it is a Hot Wheels, so it probably isn't. But this looks pretty good. Nice yellow with the black roof. Yeah, that looks nice. And then next up is the DeLorean. I would think I would know how to open these packages correctly by now, but apparently I don't. Hmm. Interesting, this is plastic. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. Nice, you know, Zamac finish on it. This plastic's a little bit of a letdown, it looks kind of cheap. But. The Hot Wheels, so it's not 
that. Staying in focus, it would help. Window opening there. Yeah, all right. Very cool. And then the last one is this very weird 70s Chevy Nova. Interesting. It's a very weird looking car. I'm a big fan of the Nova. I definitely, definitely love this generation. It's a big plastic wing on the back. Yeah, this is this is interesting. It's like it has a roll, a very very thick <laughs> roll cage in there. That's uh, that's some that's some serious protection they they have in this thing. I don't know. This looks this looks pretty cool. What do you guys think? It's uh, interesting for sure. So all right, very cool. Um. <clears throat> Let's see, let's, <clears throat> I guess we'll open these flying customs really quickly. These sh we should be able to do this really fast. Take a quick look at these. Just give them a quick spin, the 55 Chevy. It's very nice. It's Nova, my favorite out of the set. one. I love this car overall, but it looks it looks nice in this, you know, kind of retro livery. And the 68 Shelby GT500. Some Castro logo on there. It's a little surprising to see a actual licensed name on one of these cars. Goodyear as well. It's cool. I like this one a lot too. Looks good in green. And then the mock one. This casting just looked weird to me. The proportions are off. The big wheel in the back just looks silly. Yeah. Not a fan of this casting. Still not really a fan of this casting, but oh well, it's okay. And the Firebird. This one looks really nice. Black with the stripes and the gold. You know, it's plastic at the on the you know, the gold part is plastic, but it still it looks it looks good. For you know, mainline style Hot Wheels. Custom auto. Not really a whole lot to say about this one. I mean, it looks okay for what it is. And then the last one in this set, Plymouth GTX. Another one where there's really not a whole lot to say about it. All right, next up, I'll just get these out of the package really quickly. 
classic classic beetle this looks pretty good chrome wheels with siren or and then the light oh boy that looks wonky seriously wonky base is not sitting right at all that's unfortunate come on green light yeah look at that it's totally crooked oh. 77 Volkswagen rabbit is a such a cute little casting so open the hood doesn't it yep we'll put the engine in there it's a nice basic street version of the of the rabbit and one more green light This is such a nice casting. I've done <laughs> so many of these now. I think I already have at least seven. So this is number eight, eight versions of this. But you know, since they're police or fire liveries, they're all, all pretty different, which is cool. And then they, you know, they do different accessories. You can get the push bars on the front and things but different light bars yeah, this is a nice version nice to have a fire department version all right um let's see we'll do a few of these mini gts in this we're at 32 minutes right now so let's go ahead and get these these tight tie cans out because i want to take a look at them number 225 we've seen we've seen many gt boxes many times so this is such a cool car i if i were if i were going to buy a electric car and i was willing to spend you know close to two hundred thousand dollars on a car this is what i would buy really not willing to spend close to two hundred thousand dollars on a car though this is kind of a ridiculous thing to spend money on even though i love cars i much prefer them in this form you can still appreciate them without having to uh endure such a huge hit to your wallet Although, I don't know, by the time I'm done, I may have spent $200,000 on, on toy cars. And we have the white version. I think it looks better. closer look at this so the looks like this is actually painted the tail lights are painted on this which is a little bit unusual for a mini gt tycoon turbo s it looks like it's a little bit crooked too What do you think? White or blue? For me, I definitely think the white looks better. But I also happen to really like white cars. I think the last three cars that I owned were white. Very cool. All right, let's see. 
Um, let's take a look at this. This is on the, oops, killing some Hot Wheels. to see just how much of a, a difference there is and to see this packaging so this is the gather box which is cool I definitely wish uh, tarmac works would go this direction more for the global 64 line than for than the, the current packaging that they're using I, it's just so bulky and, okay, this is, okay, so this has a plastic, this is a piece of plastic, so I guess you can seal up the container. Of course, it's going to foil me on getting the car out. How do you get the car out? Oh, okay, interesting. Oh, interesting. Well, that's actually very cool. Does this just slide out? Didn't expect this kind of problem. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> wow, that was that was much more challenging than I would have expected. So this this just slides. So there's a little there's little slots in there. So this slides into those slots and sits in there. I'm not going to put that back in there. I'm going to spend another five minutes trying to get it out. And uh, so you get a little plinth here. It's screwed on with one screw. So buried my screwdriver under the ridiculous number of cars that I have. And there we go. So this is it's definitely different. The finish on it's different. It's got a you know gray, the white. I buried the, the Zonda under these two. There it is. Not a huge difference. You've got a... There's a uh, shark fin here on the wing. That's different. And there's a secondary wing down here. And then there's differences in these, these arrow features here, these dive planes. There's two on the Zonda R and there's three here. Brake ducts are different. They're actually bigger on the Zonda R. So that's good. I mean, at least these aren't exactly the same. It looks like the body casting is probably the same. The base is different, maybe. Although, let's see if we can zoom in here. Is this dive plane? cast in. No, it looks like that's part of the base. Yeah, so the base is different. The body's the same. This may even be part of the base. Yeah, so then this is an add-on piece. So it's the same base casting but yeah, 
but a different base and then a different different wing. So, okay, well that's cool. I'm glad to have both. It's different enough to make it worth having. I don't know if it's the price is justified. I mean, because they're equivalent quality. There's there's nothing significantly better quality about this one. And this is forty dollars, and this one was you know fifteen or eighteen or whatever it was. I think it was probably closer to eighteen. Wheels are are exactly the same. The tires on this on the the Zonda R actually have printing, whereas this one doesn't have any at all. So that's actually a little detail that's better on this. But yeah, all right. Well, that's a little more. Spent a little more time on that than I probably should have for this this video. Uh, let's see. Let's look at one more. One more, and then we'll we'll call it for this this video, and I'll do a part two for the rest of these Mini GTs and this uh, this very cool Ferrari. So, um, but let's take a look at this Bugatti. I've had this one for for you know it's been around. Been came I think on Monday, so I've been very anxious to get a get a look at it. And let's see, does the quality of the model live up to the quality of the packaging? Because the packaging is quite nice. Um, it's a roller. That's good. Yeah, so this, out of the package and in the hand, this feels very similar to a, a Mini GT or a, you know, a Tarmac Works Global 64. And it is going to roll. It does not have the rubberized mirrors like, a, like both of those models would. Inserted headlight details which look really good. Nice grill. Let's see if we can zoom in on this logo. So that looks, a little hair on there. Yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good. Let's look at the interior there. Some molding in the seats. Doesn't seem to be much else in there. It's a little, can't really see through that window. But yeah, look at the, look at the taillights. Those look really nice. Look inside the car. <laughs> yeah, so. I don't know. This is a pretty cool model. It does seem to be roughly Mini GT, uh, Tarmac Works Global 64 quality. It's more expensive though, um, so that's that's a little bit of a problem. The packaging is really cool. So this is, I like this packaging a lot because it's very easy to just drop the car back in there, put this back on, and then slide it back in the box. This is a very convenient packaging, very easy to store. Has in you know tells you what what the car is on on all the sides. This is well designed packaging. I wish Tarmac Works would learn from this. <laughs> Do this <laughs> for your Global 64s, please, and other brands too. You know, this is all you guys need to do. This is this is this is excellent packaging, and this is you know effectively a unknown. Chinese brand of die cast, <laughs> but looks, looks really good. All right. I'm going to quit rambling now and uh, I'm going to do a part two where we'll take a look at these new mini GTs, uh, the four GTs, especially where's the, where's this one? I'm very excited to get this one out of the package. And <clears throat> otherwise, you know, if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe and, you know, leave a comment below and, uh, otherwise, thank you, and uh, I'll talk to you next time.